dear Carlton, even when you make moves that make sense, getting George Hewitt and you're going to get Adam Chera, you're still confusing the shit out of me, and we need to talk about it. So news came in over the weekend that Sydney were not going to match Carlton's offer for George Hewitt, which is four years and for coin that has been unreleased, but Sydney do get an end of second round pick for him, so it's got to be at least decently sized. Now, Hewitt is a good get for Carlton, contrary to what Kane Corns thinks, because he's going to provide a defensive edge to a midfield that was getting decimated in the back halves of games last year, because Sam Walsh can't do it himself, and Patrick Cripps had a really down year, as we know. Now, Hewitt is going to be either a tagger for midfielders that are going to be completely dominant, as in they're going to probably want him to go to an Oliver or a Petrarca when they play Melbourne, for example, or a McRae if they play the Bulldogs or a Liberatore. Hewitt's also going to be provided as the sweeper at the back of stoppages because he's really good with his hands. And although he's not the most damaging kick, at times he's just going to need to get a kick out of there, which he can do, and which is not the role they want Sam Walsh to play, who's one of the best runners in the AFL. Now, Patrick Cripps did have a down year last year. That's been well documented, and I've expressed uh, in writings as well that he did struggle. But if we're going to assume that he comes back to somewhat near his best, maybe 80% if he's fully fit, Carlton's midfield is going to be really damaging. Adam Cherry is a really good kick of the ball. Sam Walsh is one of the hardest workers and one of the best players in the game, evidenced by his fourth place finish in the Brownlow medal. Patrick Cripps has been a superstar in the past, and whilst I'm not 100% convinced he can get back to superstar level, he's definitely going to stay at star level. And like I said, George Hewitt is a nice piece, and they kept on Matt Kennedy last year, who did play some good footy, but isn't in the uh, echelon that those four players are in. Absolutely not. The reason why Carlton are confusing me is because they're going to go into this draft with not a lot of capital. They've still got too many B and C graders on their list. And whilst this group wants to play finals, if you listen to Luke Sayers, Michael Voss looks like a dead man walking because this will still need to gel. And whilst Carlton might struggle in the first four to six weeks of the season, by the time they get to the end of the season, are we really going to learn that much? Can this Carlton group win a final? I don't think so. If Charlie Kerno is fully fit, awesome. Him and Harry McKay are going to be really damaging, but they've still got Mitch McGovern on their list. He's not going to be the player that they want him to be, clearly, and he's still on massive coin. Their back line is still a worry. Still a worry. They're paying $1.6 million to their halfback flankers, which is just ludicrous. And although I'm a big fan of Jacob Wietering and a fan of Liam Jones and the way that he's turned his career around at Carlton, I still think they're a centre-half back away. And I still think that their gel in the back line is still off. Sam Doherty, they're going to play on a wing. Him and Zach Fisher, which is fine. I prefer Doherty down back. Liam Stocker is a goer, but Carlton probably paid too much to get him anyway. And he'll need to take another step forward. And they haven't had Caleb Marchbank, who I am a fan of. If Carlton can get a good run at it, their ceiling for me is still only finals. And I don't really know how they're going to win one. Sam Walsh is a decent user of the footy. He's decent. He's a good user of the footy. I'll change it to good. He's a good user of the footy. Adam Chera has been a good user of the footy. But again, Carlton are paying for potential, and they're going to pay for it with a pick six. Now, Adam Chera was a top 10 pick, who Freo did develop really, really nicely. So I actually don't mind Carlton giving up pick six for him. But Luke Say is saying finals is the benchmark. Finals is if everything goes well. Of the top eight teams, you'd think only GWS are a chance to drop out of that mold uh, if their injuries continue. Carlton, fully fit, might be better than GWS as they finished last year, but GWS had a shitload of injuries. Essendon are only going to get better. Now, I know statistically teams are going to drop out. It's happened all the time. But why are Carlton the team that's going to step up? There isn't really any proof that this Carlton side is going to take a massive step forward. So how far away from winning finals are they? Is it another preseason? Is it to turn out these players because then it does need to be a clean out they have got too many guys will Settlefield, david cunningham and the like there are more players and yes i know i've just picked a few of them out patty dow and Lockie o'brien look like they could be moving on this year carlton's list right now needs to set up for their next flag or they're done They've got a Coleman medalist. They've got an All-Australian centre-half back. They've now got a midfield that are complementing each other. But if you take away the spine, they don't really have a lot else. I really like Michael Gibbons' year in 2020. But they don't really have a lot else small forward style. 
they're still a really long while away because whilst they've got A graders, and if we put George Hewitt and Adam Chera in the B plus market, and we can do that, the amount of Bs and Cs that they've got isn't okay for the weight of expectation that Luke Sayers has put on Carlton. If Luke Sayers said we're going to develop this year in attack finals, even in 2023, that would have been so much better to say. Michael Voss would have a year to figure out what's going on at Carlton, figure out what players that he wants, that he wants to get rid of, and what game style he wants. But Michael Voss is being told right now to go. Go get finals now. And I feel like Michael Voss is a dead man walking because I don't think Carlton are going to get there. And if Carlton do get there, everything will have gone their way and I would be really happy for them. But if they finish eighth, they're going to get a back end of a top 10 pick. And if they don't win a final, they might think that they're close but they're not. No one really thinks Carlton are close to a flag. And if you think they are, please let me know how, because I really can't say it. And I don't think Carlton fans do either. And of the ones that I've spoken to, they don't feel it either. So whilst I give George Hewitt and Adam Chera acquisitions a massive tick, Tom DeConing is still learning. Mark Pitanay was really good in 2020. But this Carlton group are way off what the expectations are by Luke Sayers. And I feel like Michael Voss is a dead man walking for it. Lockie O'Brien and Paddy Dow do not need to be there now. Carlton need to accept that they've made the mistakes and move them on. Lockie O'Brien's a good kick. He's not that hard at the contest, if we're being truly honest. And I don't like saying that, but it's true. Carlton, you're still confusing the crap out of me. And I still think you've got a way to go. I feel really bad for Michael Voss. Because Luke Sayers has put this expectation on him that I don't think they can fulfill. What do you think about Carlton? Whether you're a Carlton fan or not a Carlton fan, how far off a flag do you think they are? Let me know down below. And if you enjoyed, like, share and subscribe and we'll talk soon.